Hi everybody, just a short video today to look at a tool, or maybe better yet, a workflow that will allow us to perform an analysis in InfraWorks or even Civil 3D and Map that many folks may not be aware of. So let me let me explain. I'm starting with a, a model in InfraWorks that was created with Model Builder, and in doing so, I've got an aerial photo, I've got some roads that were created, I've got some uh, water features representing the river and that, might even have a couple of coverage areas and buildings in here as well. Uh, my form of analysis that I would like to be able to compute is I'd like to compute the shortest distance between two points. So let me turn on a layer here. I've got some sketch coverage areas that I've made previously. We'll go ahead and say OK. And we'll see two red arrows appear on the screen at different sides of my model. So we see one popping up here on the west at an intersection down here in the corner. And I've got another one that's displayed way up here in the northeast at the end of a cul-de-sac. Now there are two arbitrary points. The, the concept that I want to get across is if I needed to compute the shortest distance between those points, basically following the roads, it would be nice to have a form of analysis to do that. And I'm going to show you uh, how we can get that done. So to accomplish this, what I'm going to do, first I need to know the coordinate system that I'm working with in my model. And I believe I've already got that set. We'll come over here to, to my settings. And then we'll come down to my model properties. And if we look, I'm currently set to um, Illinois State Plain East Zone US Foot. I know it's a code IL83EF, but that's, uh, that's what it represents. We'll go ahead and close that. So I've got a coordinate system set that will work. Um, and I think that, uh, that that's all I'll need for right now. So let's do this. To perform the analysis, I'm going to hop over and leverage a tool in, uh, in Civil 3D. I could also do this in Map as well. But since I've got Civil 3D installed on my machine, we'll go ahead and come into Civil 3D to do that. So we'll go ahead and uh, first thing we'll do is we'll set the settings within Civil 3D to take and match the coordinate system that we're currently using in Map. So in the tool space, I'm going to go to Settings. We'll go to Drawing 2 here. Edit Drawing Settings. And I'm going to set this to USA, Illinois. NAD 83, East Zone, US Foot. Okay? So I've got the uh, same, uh, same coordinate system code as the last one. We're good to go there. We'll click on OK, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my map task pane that's already open for me on the screen. If it were not, what I could do is I could come up under the palettes area here on the home tab, and the icon here in the upper right of the available icons is the map task pane, or I could type map W space to get it as well. Once we select it, we have the opportunity to turn it on or off. In this case, it's off. We want to see it, so we'll turn it on and it becomes available for us. All right, what I would like to do is I'm going to connect to that particular uh, InfraWorks model, and that model is called Test. We'll uh, go ahead and click uh, Connect to Data. The model is in a form of a, a SQLite or SQLite file, so we'll use a Add SQLite Connection. And then I'll select the folder and tell it where to go. Now, the Autodesk InfraWorks models, by default, are being stored in my documents wherever that folder is located. I've got that redirected from the default location. But I've got my documents, InfraWorks models, AutoCAD 360 or Autodesk 360, and then there's a number corresponding with the folder of the last uh, model created in Model Builder. In this case, it's my test uh, SQLite file, so we'll go ahead and select that. We'll go ahead and hit Connect. And then I'm going to scroll down, and there's two things that I'm going to grab. I'm going to grab coverages because that'll help me uh, with the arrows, the two arrows that I created where we're starting, where we'll end. And then I'm going to come down and grab roads because that's the analysis I want to perform is along the roadways. All right, now while I'm selecting these, my coordinate system is LL84. By default, the, the model that I'm currently using in InfraWorks is in an LL84 system. The uh, UCS or the reprojected information is currently being put to Illinois State Plain. So the fact that it's LL84, the, this being set to Illinois State Plain is automatically going to project it as well. So we won't need to worry about that. I'm going to go ahead and add that information to my map. Information is displayed. And if we look in the uh, 
task pane here on display manager we can see information about the roads we can also see let's maybe move this guy over a little bit see if I can get a little more screen real estate I'll put this on this side for just a second and drag this guy open a little bit further there we go so we can see roads and we can see coverages and if we zoom up we see the coverages are represented by the arrows I created and then the roadways uh, represented as well so let's uh, put my tool space back here actually let's maybe shrink that up a touch so we've got a little more space with which to work okay so I've got my uh, my model here ready to go now one of the first things that I, I like to do when we bring something into Civil 3D from InfraWorks or from anywhere and it's being reprojected is to quickly test to make sure that it's being reprojected onto the appropriate location so what I'm gonna do is using geolocation I can take and turn on an aerial photo and in doing so when the aerial photo is turned on I should see that information in the background if I do not and it's not uncommon that I wouldn't especially when I've set the coordinate system and then I've not saved the file yet sometimes it doesn't completely take effect until I've saved the file and I've gotten out and I, I need to get back in so let's do this I'm gonna save my file we'll give it a name we'll call this analysis we'll say save then I'm gonna close it and then we'll click on it to open it up again immediately and you'll notice that when I do I don't see the reprojected data because now it's reprojected where it's supposed to be we'll hit Z for zoom enter E for extents enter and now we see our data and we say it's overlaying the aerial photograph the way that we would expect all right so everything is where it uh, should be everything's the appropriate size scaled in that correctly so uh, I, that is confirmed so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my geolocation I don't need the aerial for right now we'll go ahead and turn that map off and just deal with the geometry so what I'm going to do first is we'll turn off the coverages that'll turn off my two arrows here because I don't need those and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the geometry off the screen here so we'll pick two points to make a window to select that and when I right click I've got the opportunity to check those features out so my intention is not to change any of them I'm just going to check it out because I'd like to leverage the geometry to perform my analysis so it tells me I'm attempting to do this with a large amount of data we'll go ahead and continue the checkout we should be fine it's checked out the information and it's back it's still highlighted on the screen what I'm gonna do because those entities are still highlighted I'm gonna hit X to explode we'll hit enter and then it'll explode that geometry down to polylines all right at the end of the day what I'm going to be doing or what we'll be doing to perform this analysis is creating what's called a topology so to work with a topology I want to break the entities down into their most native um, entity type and in this case they've now become um, polylines uh, may also you know could also be line segments but because they're polylines I'm gonna explode them again so we'll uh, hit X to explode we'll select all my geometry we'll explode them a second time the reason I'm gonna explode them the second time is if I have a polyline I want to make sure that uh, as it's following the geometry or when I take and pick a point where I want to start and where it where it ends I don't want it to be trying to start from the beginning of a polyline or the end of the polyline I want it to snap right to the the intersection or the vertice that I'm looking for rather than determining information based on the ends of polylines all right so these are now all line segments in that so we're uh, we're good to go let's go ahead and create our topology we're going to uh, turn back on the uh, coverage areas here actually let's make the topology first we'll go to map Explorer topology and then we're gonna click on create and I've got three different types of topology we'll do a network topology and we'll give it a name we'll call it the shortest path we'll say next select links I'm gonna say select manually and then grab all of the roads off the screen so we'll select all of those with a crossing window We'll say next 
Uh, I don't have any nodes that are in there already, so I'm not going to worry about selecting those. Create new nodes. I'm going to check the box if in building the topology nodes are created. We'll let it go ahead and do that. That's fine. We'll click on finish. My topology has been created. We see the results listed down here at the bottom. And if we look over here in the map task pane, here's our new topology shortest path. And if we look, we can start to do some things like show geometry, which is probably important because when we select it, you'll notice the geometry goes from black to red. If there were large areas that weren't um, processed, we would know that there was an issue with that data. Maybe it needed to be exploded again or was in a format that was unacceptable. The fact that it's all red, that looks good. I can also come down and start to glean some statistics. Uh, it's telling me I can't do that till I actually finish the displaying, so I'll uh, hit escape to cancel that. We'll then come down, right click, and we'll do statistics. We can see uh, the total length of all of the roads together. I can see average, minimum, maximum, things like that, which can be helpful. But in our case, what we'd like to do next is uh, we'd like to take and perform an analysis. All right, let's turn our coverages back on so I can quickly find those two points again. So we'll go to Display Manager, turn on Coverages. We'll zoom up so we can see where that first location is. I'll come back to Map Explorer. Shortest path, we'll say analysis, and then we're going to come down to network analysis. A couple uh, different ones that we can do. We can do shortest path between two points. You can do best route, which is really nice because if I were to pick five or six points, it would determine the most um, um, productive, the most efficient route to be able to uh, visit all of those points or pass through all of those locations. We could use that for driving. We could use that for any number of different things, but a fantastic tool as well. And then they've also got a flood trace you can pick from a particular point, and it will fan out in uh, based on information that we have with the uh, the different segments. So I want to find oh you know go down the road 20 miles in all directions, and it shows me uh, how far we would get from that particular point. So in our our case, we're going to do shortest path. We'll say next. We just need to give it two pieces of information, where we're going to start, where we're going to end. So it says select start point. We'll come down here and I'll, I'll pick. Now even if I'm a little off the, uh, the intersection there, when I pick, you see it snaps onto that. That's because it's snapping onto the, the node or the vertice um, that, that came in. Sometimes if we leave these as polylines, it might have grabbed the end of the polyline, which could be here or down here. That's why I explode it the second time. All right, so we've selected our start point. Right click to enter that end point. We'll take and pick. I'm going to zoom up into this area here. We'll come and we'll pick and it grabs the end of the cul-de-sac, which was our ending point. Right click. Uh, don't need to select anything else. We'll say next. Uh, no resistance or direction. Um, we'll go ahead and say uh, output methods. I'm going to create a new topology. We'll call this uh, short D for shortest distance. And we'll say finish. We see finish, we see that that's now been colored in red. If we back up, it is automatically uh, created for us or determined mathematically the shortest route uh, using our roadways from Model Builder from point A to point B. All right, so what I would like to do now is I would like to get this out back into InfraWorks so that we can display it in our model. Now, to do that, unfortunately, I can't export the... Uh, this topology directly, but I can export a buffer topology. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here and I'm going to perform another analysis and we'll perform a, a buffer analysis and you'll see why this is important here in just a second. So we'll perform a buffer analysis. Basically I want it to you know, go out to either side around my particular geometry, in this case just the line segment. We'll say uh, buffer distance, I'm just going to say one foot, one foot to either side. We'll say next. Uh, I'm going to give this a name, we'll call this short, uh, we'll say B for buffer, just so that the name's different. Um, we'll say next, uh, I'll create any nodes if it needs anything, we'll click on finish, and it's displayed. So we can come in here and look, the center line was our uh, shortest path, this is the buffer that was created as a result of that. You notice it's in the form of a polyline. Uh, as opposed to being a uh, map object or ADE top view in this particular case. 
So because it's in that form, we can now do more with it to be able to uh, get it out of, uh, of this environment and into InfraWorks. So let's do this. I'm going to say map export. So with my autocomplete, we'll let that finish that up. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll call this, uh, I've already got it going into a Tuesday folder on my desktop. We'll call this uh, short final for right now. I ran one earlier called short, so we'll just call this one short final. What are we going to export? We're going to export a polygon. Uh, we can uh, select it manually off the screen, or we could come down and we could say select polygon topology to export, and here is short B. Okay, that's one of the reasons we want to take and, and convert that into a, uh, a buffer or a, a polygon is gives us the ability to export that directly uh, as a shapefile in, uh, in our export. So don't think I need to set anything else, not worried about adding any attributes or anything like that to it. We'll click on OK. It says uh, one object exported of, uh, of two selected exported in zero seconds. So it's out and it's ready to go. I'm going to flip back to InfraWorks. To bring that into InfraWorks, like anything else, we can uh, drag and drop. It's probably the easiest way. So we'll come here to Tuesday. In Tuesday, we have short final dot shape. I'm going to left click and hold on that drag, bring it into my model and let go. And then I'll fill out some information as to what this is. So type, we're going to set it as a coverage because it's a buffer area or a polygon. I'm going to come down to style and we'll give it a color. In this case, I'll just give it a, a shade of yellow here. And then I'm going to do one more thing. If you remember, my buffer is only one foot wide, and the way that InfraWorks is currently configured, uh, a, a coverage area is um, overwritten by a road. I can't have a coverage go over the road. So actually, it would bring it in, but we wouldn't see it. So what I want to do is I want to put a buffer on that polygon such that it's wider than the road if I'm going to be displaying the road so that it'll actually display. So I'm going to set my buffer to 50 feet. So we will set that. And then I'm going to say close and refresh. We'll have that display. We'll go ahead and I'll close my uh, data sources here while that's coming up. And we notice now that our, uh, our buffer or our shortest path is now displayed within our model. Okay, so within... Uh, Literally, uh, a handful of minutes here, I could uh, take a large model from, uh, from Model Builder, uh, geometry that was created through some other means other than my own, and take that geometry immediately and perform a shortest path analysis to quickly be able to determine the shortest distance between two points along the roadway, or also by leveraging a topology. You see there was some other ones we could do as well, uh, um, a network analysis form of a trace, shortest path, uh, even going through multiple points. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful, and I look forward to talking to you again. See ya.